Hey guys, we're here and welcome to episode 5 of my The Ninth Age Battle Report series. Today we are up against Vincent again with another Vampire Covenants vs. Dwarven Holds matchup. I'd like to reintroduce Vincent, or Flammy, as he's known in the forums and Discord. In case you didn't know, Vincent is the developer responsible for New Recruit and its integration with Warhol. If you don't know about New Recruit, it's probably what I'd call the best list builder for the Ninth Age out there. I'll be making a video about New Recruit in the future, so please watch out for that. Now onto the lists. This is the same list from last time, please watch that battle report as well. Links will be on the description. I have a King General with Ancestral Memory, Shield, Pistol, Rune of Resistance, Rune of Iron, Hand Weapon, has Rune of Destruction, Rune of Smashing, and Rune of Quickening. I have three Dragon Seekers, an, and a 20-man unit of Greybeards with Great Weapon, Vanguard, Full Command, and Flaming Standard, a 20-man unit of Greybeards with Shields, Full Command, and Runic Standards of Swiftness. I also have a unit of 15 Clan Marksmen with Great Weapon, Shield, Crossbow, Musician, and Champion, and three units of 25 Seekers with Vanguard, and lastly, a single unit of Steamcopter with Shrapnel Grenades. Today, Vincent is bringing with him a Necromancer General, with the Dead Arise, Wizard Adept of Evocation, and Necromantic Staff. A Vampire Count with the Lamia Bloodline with Commandment, a Wizard Master in Witchcraft, and Destiny's Call Light Armor with Great Weapon. Another Necromancer with Wizard Adept in Evocation, a block of 40 Skeletons with Spears, Full Command, and Rending Banner, two blocks of 24 Skeletons, Full Command with Legion Standard, a unit of 21 zombies, a unit of 2 bat swarms, a dark coach, a unit of 3 ghasts with a champion, a unit of 10 wraiths, and 2 shrieking horrors. For spells, once again, we skip my selection and go straight to Vincent's. All 3 of his wizards has his hereditary spell. His vampire is bringing Raven's Wing, Deceptive Glamour, The Wheel Turns, and Willow the Wisp. His general is using two copies of the Arise Bound spell and Whispers of the Veil. His other necromancer is bringing Spectral Blades. We are playing the Counter Thrust deployment once again and capture the flags. I have chosen the sides and Vincent deploys first. Vincent deploys on the top and starts by deploying his Bat Swarm besides the wood, creating a 20 inch bubble pushing my deployment zone a few inches backward. I counter deploy with a unit of Seekers beside the woods on my DZ to create some sort of hold on the center. Vincent's next deployment is the big unit of Skeletons on the farm securing his hold on my left flank. In response, I deploy my crossbowmen behind the fence. Vincent's third deployment is then a zombie block on his back line. Assuming Vincent would drop everything to get first turn, I place my copter on the center next to the Seekers, now known as Seeker Unit A. So I have some flexibility in movement with this decision. Vincent then drops the rest of his army from left to right. He drops the smaller skeleton block next to the big unit, the rates between the big skeletons and the bats, a second small unit of skeletons on the right of the zombies. The dark coach is sandwiched between both units of shrieking horrors on the right flank. For the rest of my deployment from left to right, I place the great weapon graybeards on my far left. Followed, followed by the sword and board beards with the king, hereby known as the king's unit, next to the fence and crossbowmen. I then place my second unit of seekers, now known as seeker unit B, next to the farm, sandwiching the copter. And my last unit of seekers, now known as seeker unit C, is then placed on my far right, angled in a way to threaten the shrieking horrors. Each unit of seekers has a dragon seeker situ situated on the right flank. Vincent has no vanguards, and so we head to my vanguards. I start off by marching, rather vanguarding my seeker unit up 12 inches up, up the board, hopefully to enclose the battlefield and just maybe catch the shrieking horrors. Next up, seeker B, vanguards 12 inches. Taking note of the charge ranges of Vic's, Vincent's units, wheeling slightly left to maximize visibility to be able to catch as many units as I can. Seeker A does the same thing, taking note of the rate's charge distance mainly. The King's unit also marches up, taking care of the rate's threat range and wheeling right to keep visibility of majority of Vincent's forces. The Great Weapon Beards does the same. I think I also forgot to note that I finally remembered the grudges and placed them on the big unit of skeletons and zombies. I feel like I may have misplaced the grudges, but please tell me in the comments how else I should have used them. 
Vampire Covenants, turn one. Vincent starts off the game and forgoes his charges this turn. He starts his regular movement by wheeling the big unit of skeletons to face both units of great beards. One of the Shrieking Horrors flies next to my Seeker Unit C to try and take shots at it on his shooting phase, while the Dark Coach and the other Horror move closer to the house. The unit of zombies move up the board to support the big unit of skeletons. The Bat Swarm then flies up to the Seeker in Seeker A in an attempt to chaff it while the Wraiths fly straight in front of it in preparation for his magic phase uh, magical movement combo. The small unit of zombies on my left moves back away from the Great Weapon Beards while the one to my right moves forward. Uh, sorry, the Skeleton unit on my right moves forward. Vincent forgets to move back his gas, but we fix that on my turn. The Shrieking Horror takes a shot at Seeker Unit C, taking out two models. He casts Raven's Wing on the Wraiths, which I am unable to dispel. He tries to see if there's a way for him to get into contact with my uh, blocks to deal massive amounts of free damage. Luckily, there's no prime option, so he simply opts to wield to face my crossbowman. He also adds a whole bunch of zombies and skeletons to his units thanks to Arise if I'm not mistaken. Warven holds turn 1. For charges, I initially declare a charge on the ghouls with Seeker Unit A, but we remember that Vincent had declared them to move back. So I change the charge target into the bats, realizing that it's a good possibility that I can overcharge into the raids. I have no further charges this turn, as the only charges I can make are both of the Greybeard units into the big unit of skeletons with Vincent's lords, or have the King's unit flank the rates, which I don't really believe is a good charge. I feel like I can win or at least deal enough damage to the rates, but with Aegis 3 plus, only the King would be able to deal damage. That unit is likely to get stuck and get flanked by the big unit of skeletons. Yes, I could chaff the skeletons with my other unit of Greybeards, but I don't really want that as I'm likely to lose a lot of them thanks to his count. I then skip to regular movement and start off with the copter and put it in short range of the Shrieking Horror. I then use Seeker Unit C to protect the copter from getting charged and keep line of sight to the coach and other horror. Finally, both of my Greybeards pull back. For shooting, the copter manages to deal two wounds on the horror while the crossbowmen whiff on the raids. Combat is swift against the bats and I overcharge into the raids with Seeker Unit A. A problem does arise from doing this though, I've completely blocked Seeker Unit B. Vampire Covenants, turn 2. For Vincent's turn 2, he charges the gas into Seeker Unit A's flanks. But we actually forget to move them due to the gas blending into the woods, we fix that later. For regular movement, Vincent moves his second shrieker into the range of my copter as he needs to get rid of it using his shooting attacks. The dark coach then marches out of the charge range of Seeker Unit C. All three of his backline then move up the board. For magic, Vincent manages to set off the wheel turns on my Seeker Unit A and will wisp on my King's Unit and applies Witchcraft Attribute to the big unit of Skeletons. I managed to stop the movement shenanigans Vincent was attempting on the big unit of Skeletons, which what was what I really wanted to avoid. I then lose the Copter and four Seekers on Unit C from the Shrieking Horror's ranged attacks. Combat is brutal, I managed to lose only one Seeker while dealing two wounds to the gas and taking out three rates. Vincent loses a gas and three more rates due to being unstable. Dwarven Holds turn 2. I skip my charge phase and immediately move to regular movement. I start off the turn by moving the Great Weapon Beards out of line of sight of the big unit of skeletons. The random movement on the King's unit really puts a hamper on my plans. I initially wanted to enter either double charge the big unit of skeletons and hopefully win or at least deal massive amounts of damage to that unit, but Will-O-Wisp forced my hand. I was hoping the random movement would let the King's unit connect with either the Wraiths or Wolves, but I did not roll high enough to do so. Seeing that I won't have optimal shooting, I reform my crossbowmen into a 5 wide unit to prepare for the inevitable block of skeletons. I do the same with Seeker Unit B. 
Seeker Unit C continues to pressure the horrors and the Black Coach and marches up the defense. Combat is quick and I finally wipe out the Wraiths and Ghasts with Seeker Unit A, losing only 2 models. I attempt to reform but the way I position things I cannot find a reform that lets me protect my flank from the skeletons to my right and need to grit my teeth for the next turn. Vampire Covenants turn 3. Vincent takes the obvious flank charges with the big unit on the King's unit and the small skeleton unit on the right of Seeker unit A. For regular movement, he pulls back the other small unit of skeletons and the zombies away from my great weapon beards. While both of his spell characters in the zombie unit get out to keep in range to support the skeleton units. While the Shrieking Horror threatens the rear of Seekers A and B, the Dark Coach continues to pull farther away from Seeker Unit C. I get lucky this magic phase and no spells go off, either thanks to low rolls or being, being able to dispel them. For shooting, I lose 2 Seekers from Unit A and 2 Seekers from Unit C thanks to the Horrors. For combat, we start off with the King's unit and I luckily only lose 2 models but am also I'm only able to kill 1 skeleton. This forces a panic test and I fail both times, a reroll was granted by seeing it all on the uh, Greybeards. Vincent tries to pursue hoping to wipe out the King's unit and overrun into my Seekers but manages to fail to do so. This opens up the Seekers and the Crossbowmen on my turn, which is extremely good for me. The combat with Seeker Unit A and the other unit of Skeletons essentially ends up in a draw. We both kill 3 models each, but I lose that combat due to ranks, charge, flank, and if I'm not mistaken, a standard. Thankfully, Unbreakable keeps my unit there, but I'm unable to reform to face that block. Marvin Holes, turn 3. I take the obvious double charge on the big unit of skeletons with Seeker Unit B and the Crossbowmen. I manage to rally the King's unit and face them to hopefully support the Seeker Unit A the following turns. I continue to move Seeker Unit C into the new left flank where the battle is mostly happening. It is now in a position to support the rest of my army on the following turns. I then reform my Great Weapon Beards to face the Shrieking Horror as there's a potential that I lose this combat. We skip straight to combat and I choose to resolve the battle with Seeker A first. I manage to kill 3 skeletons and lose none of my Seekers. I still lose combat due to ranks but I am now able to reform to face them properly. For the big battle we enter and I accept a duel from the count and we end up with a draw for the first round of the duel. For the rest of combat I manage to take out 11 skeletons including losses taken from unstable. Vampire Covenants turn 4. I was expecting Vincent to take the obvious charge into my Seeker Unit A from the Horror on or the King's Unit, but he surprises me by charging the Crossbowman instead. His coach also charges Seeker Unit A to support it. For regular movement, both of Vincent's backline units continue to pull back, while the Wounded Horror flies up to take pot shots at the King's Unit. The Spellcasters also spread out to maximize their spell range. For Vincent's spells, Vincent manages to cast Spectral Blades on the big unit of Skeletons and Deceptive Glamour on Seeker Unit B. Combat is extremely brutal. The fight with the Seeker and Dark Coach ends up with me losing 6 Seekers but I also take out another 11 Skeletons. While the battle with the Crossbowmen is a much more complicated fight. For the duel, I manage to deal 2 wounds to the Vampire and take 1 on my Dragon Seeker. All in all, I managed to take out 9 skeletons with all my combined attacks. Thanks to this, Vincent takes another 4 wounds on the horror and another 4 wounds from the skeletons thanks to undead. Warbid Holds, turn 4. For my turn 4, I declare charges on the coach with Seeker Unit C and the King's Unit. Sadly, I whiff on both charges. We skip straight to combat and continue the duel. The Vampire strikes first and manages to land 2 wounds which would have been enough to kill my Dragon Seeker, but I manage to get lucky and save both. On my strike back, I manage to get lucky again and kill the Count. With this, Vincent decides to concede as he believes he no longer has threats on the board that can handle the rest of my army. I mentioned it's still possible for him to recover as he still has enough bodies to hold the center, especially with me failing the charges on the coach. 
he clarifies that it's possible to hold but not win. I'm likely going to be able to kill his Shrieking Horrors and the Black Coach should they touch any of my Seekers and the King's unit. At best, I would lose the Crossbowmen and maybe the Great Weapon Warriors if they get surrounded. But points-wise, I already have an overwhelming advantage, as the rates, the gas, and the count alone are already about a thousand points, and I've only lost the Copter. It's likely for me to, you, to lose Seeker Unit A, but not without taking the Dark Coach along with it. With that, we end the game in a Dwarf victory. So I've learned a lot from this game, there is such a way as taking away points from your enemy without actually killing them. I learned that with Seeker Unit C essentially holding back both the Shrieking Horrors and the Dark Coach, and a small unit of Skeletons and Zombies essentially doing the same thing to my Great Weapon Beards. I feel like that game of catch actually ended up more in my favor as a single unit of 810 points worth of Seekers and a Dragon Seeker, held back roughly 1,500 points of models from Vincent's side. The Great Weapon Beards did essentially lose out in terms of points by trying to catch the Zombies and Skeletons, but I feel like that prevented reinforcements from flanking my troops. Vincent and I agree that the biggest turning point in the game was being able to overcharge into the rates, had he placed his bats better, that would have never happened and I would have been in a much worse position. I think I learned something from Vincent here, as he's always done this but I've never caught on to it. It's pulling out characters from a unit. Looking at this report now, I think I could have pulled out the Dragon Seeker from the Seeker unit and I would have been able to create m more board presence and maybe even catch one of the Shrieking Horrors. If you think I could have played differently, better, or other comments, please feel free to talk to me in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe, it really helps me out a lot. I've also started a coffee page, please consider giving me a coffee. Don't worry, I will never hide my content behind a paywall and I will always publish my videos for free. But a cup of coffee helps me push out content much faster and hopefully with better quality. Thanks for watching, bye!